Hello, travel bugs. A few months ago, we had the pleasure of treating John's mother to her first stay in an all-inclusive resort, and this time, it was my parents' turn. We stayed two nights at the Grand Bavro Princess, and it greatly exceeded our expectations. The Grand Bavro Princess is located in an area of Bavro called White Sands, whose entrance is not as appealing as other areas. To put it mildly, our first impression of the hotel's exterior was not the best. Luckily, things immediately improved once we entered the lobby area. We could see this property had the potential to be one of the most beautiful we had visited. Our check-in took longer than usual because the person who checked us in was in training, but he and his trainers were super friendly. The wait was also worth it because they assigned us our room straight away instead of waiting until the official check-in time, 3 p.m. From experience, we knew to make our dinner reservations as soon as possible. You can book your desired restaurant using the hotel's app, but it was down, so we headed to the theater where staff members were taking dinner reservations. The line was long. Only one person was taking the reservations and each guest took about 10 minutes. Luckily, what looked to be more than an hour's wait only took us 28 minutes after they tweaked how they were going about it. Needless to say, this was not the perfect start to our two-night stay. After leaving our belongings in our rooms, we went to have lunch, but the buffet opened at 1 p.m the latest lunchtime we've seen in the 20 Punta Cana resorts we've visited. While we waited for the buffet to open, we had a drink in the lobby bar. I did my piña colada taste test here and the Grand Bavaro Princess got an A. La Española Buffet opened on time. This is the larger of two buffet restaurants and is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Española restaurant was big, nicely decorated with lots of food variety and crowded. In general, we liked the taste of the food but didn't like the fact that some items were not self-service, like the paella or the ice cream. The sweets were also not our favorites. After a satisfying lunch, my mom and dad went to take a nap while John and I went to the pool. The Grand Bavro Princess is a big hotel, so we decided to take the train. We waited at the designated stop near the lobby for 17 minutes, and when the train finally came, it was a free-for-all. The wait time for the train should be cut at least in half, and a better system for the line should be implemented, or the train capacity increased. From the lobby to the main pool, it was a four-minute drive. This is the biggest pool in the hotel. It's near the beach, has a volleyball net and a pool bar with wet and dry sides. Service at this bar was fast and the drinks were good. The pool is pretty, but some tiles need sprucing up. The water was a bit cloudy and the music too loud for our taste. The entertainment team was very active around this pool. The seating area definitely needed more shade. There were enough lounge chairs, but most were under the sun, making it hard to spend much time outside the water. Making things worse, the stone used for the floor around the pool gets scorching hot and can quickly burn your feet if you step on unshaded areas for too long. After some time in the pool, we headed to the beach, which looked stunning. It is one of the most beautiful beaches we've seen in the Bavro Punta Cana area. It had the characteristic turquoise color and white sand, although it was a bit wavy. The sand had a nice extension with plenty of space for soccer goals, a beach volleyball court, a half basketball court, and a petanque court. The seating area is divided into two sections, one for guests staying at the Grand Bavaro Princess and the Princess Family Club, which is the family section of the hotel, and another exclusive for guests staying at the platinum side of the resort. It had plenty of chaise lounges and palapas for shade. There was some seaweed midday on the sand, but not in the water. A considerable amount of seaweed was on the sand the following day, but numerous staff members were doing their best to clean it up. 
we were getting packaged by now, so we walked to Frappuccino Coffee, the hotel's coffee shop. You know how much we love a good coffee shop in all-inclusive resorts, so we were delighted to find out that even though Frappuccino Coffee was in the platinum section of the resort, all guests can use it. There is a nice selection of sweet and savory snacks and coffee. Our favorites were the sugar donuts and the caramel frappuccinos. We came back time and time again throughout our stay. Before we knew it, it was almost time for dinner, so we headed to our rooms to get ready. We could only get an early reservation at the Mexican restaurant and had to be there at 6 p.m., which made my dad very happy. The Mexican restaurant is called La Hacienda. The Mexican-themed decoration was well accomplished without being cliché. The staff was super friendly and accommodating. There wasn't a Mexican vegetarian option, and our waitress asked the kitchen to make me vegetarian tacos. The food was good, but it didn't wow us. A music band sang mariachi songs around the tables, which was fun. After dinner, we boarded the train to Plaza Colonial or Colonial Plaza, an open-air area overlooking an artificial lake. Plaza Colonial becomes a gathering spot at night. There's a cute ice cream truck where you can get the second dessert of the night. The ice cream was not well set, therefore you had to eat it fast because it was runny. Unsurprisingly, John and I were still a bit hungry, so we ditched my parents for a few minutes and headed over to the buffet for a final blow to our hunger. We noticed that many of the dishes were the same as during lunch. At 9.30, the night show started in the theater. The show's name was Finding the Perfect Couple and required audience participation. We thought it would be cheesy, but it was actually funny and we had a good time. After the show, I'm ashamed to say we retired to our room while my parents went dancing on Plaza Colonial. Now it's a great time to discuss the room. We booked the cheapest one, the bungalow suite, for just $94 per person per night. We fell in love with it from the moment we entered. It was huge with two distinct areas, the bedroom and living room. The bedroom was comfortable and chic. The decoration was modern and clean, and the area was well distributed. Due to the bedroom's layout, the TV was not directly in front of the beds, so it was somewhat uncomfortable to watch. But you could see out the balcony from the beds, so it was a good trade-off. The living room was spacious and very well decorated. We loved the style of the furniture and how modern it looked. The rug didn't feel very clean, but it may be its color. The area is well illuminated with natural light from the balcony, but when the blackout curtains were drawn, the room was nicely dark. The coffee station and the mini bar were hidden inside this cabinet. Our mini fridge was not working and was stocked with four bottles of soda, two cans of the famous Dominican Presidente beer, and a big water bottle. The bathroom was separated from the living room by a double door. The decoration and illumination made this space feel luxurious. The gorgeous bathtub, in addition to the stand-up shower, was a great touch. We were happy with the double vanities and amount of towels, and even happier to see the toilet area in its own private space. The balcony was big, with a wide angle of vision. This was the view from room 8411 on the second floor of Villa 84. The next morning, we had breakfast at La Española Buffet. The buffet had a nice variety, and the food was good. We didn't like that some items like bacon are served to you instead of being self-service. We didn't want the hustle and bustle of the main pool, so we went to the other pool in the hotel, the relaxed pool. It was much smaller than the pool by the beach, but we liked it more. There was no music and considerably fewer people. The relaxed bar made getting a drink easy, but has no wet side. There were plenty of lounge chairs available, but almost no shade. We spent all morning here until it was time for lunch. We headed to the beach to try the smaller buffet, El Trapiche. 
this restaurant closes for dinner when it becomes El Gaucho Steakhouse. El Trapiche, being a smaller buffet, had less variety, but we still consider it good. The food tasted good, but the best part was the view of the beach and the Caribbean breeze. We sat outside for this reason, but there were no waiters and only plastic cutlery in this area. That afternoon, we went to the sports area. Here, we played tennis on one of the three sand surface tennis courts, which were very well maintained. We also made our best efforts in the archery range, which was poorly maintained. We had dinner in the Indian restaurant Samsara. Samsara is in the middle of the artificial lake and is a gorgeous restaurant. The decor was creative and whimsical, and the view of the lake filled with ducks and flamingos was spectacular. The staff was super friendly but a little oblivious. Everything from the samosas, the shorba, and the curry lamb to the pistachio ice cream for dessert was delicious. Samsara is the best Indian restaurant we've been to in the 20 Punta Cana resorts we've stayed in, and it was our best meal at the Grand Bavaro Princess. In addition to Samsara and La Hacienda, the Grand Bavaro Princess has six specialty restaurants. Focaccia is the pizzeria. Il Tartufo is the Italian restaurant. El Gaucho is the steakhouse. El Pescador serves seafood. Tanuki is the Asian restaurant. This is where they do the tepanyaki shows. And the Japanese restaurant is called Wasabi. After dinner, we went to Rebels Sports Bar. It was two stories high with plenty of seating and a big screen in the center. Here, you can order American-style food from a short menu and drink from the bar. We had a great time playing foosball upstairs and a never-ending game of pool. There were two pool tables, but one was out of service and the foosball tables needed refurbishing. There are also pay-to-play arcade machines. The night entertainment was not in the theater that night, but rather in the Plaza Colonial. A band was playing live salsa and merengue, and people were dancing. The Colonial Plaza was active, and people were having a great time. This area, as well as the rest of the hotel, is beautiful at night. The Grand Bavro Princess is one of the prettiest hotels we visited in Punta Cana. The vegetation is lush, abundant, tropical, and well-groomed. We loved the free-roaming peacocks and flamingos, and the echo trail in the middle of the property was a delight to walk through. It is filled with mangroves, birds, turtles, and guinea pigs. We used the echo trail, or paseo ecologico, as a shortcut to move through the property, which is very large. Walking from the lobby to the beach takes about 12 minutes. Now, let's give the Grand Bavro Princess an actual rated score. Value for money. At just $94 per person per night, we give it the maximum score of 20 out of 20. Amenities, 14 out of 20. Food, 11 out of 15. Room, 13 out of 15. Beach, 10 out of 10. Service, 9 out of 10. Drinks, 4 out of 5. Entertainment, 3 out of 5. For a total score of 84 out of 100. Now click on this video to see our review of the Lopezan Costa Bavaro, our favorite Punta Cana resort so far.